اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد و عجل في فرج آل محمد و لعن و اهلك اعداءهم اجمعین السلام عليك يا سيدي و مولاي يا صاحب العصر و الزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجك الشريف Dear viewers, my most sincere and warmest greetings to you. I am blessed and fortunate to be talking to you through another episode broadcast to you by Imam Hussein TV from the land, a piece of land which has been described as the paradise on earth, Karbala. Well, tonight we're going to uh, have some sort of uh, thoughtful conversation, inshallah, during which I'm going to present some questions and we will try to seek the answers. Well, have you ever wondered why is there an age of occultation at all? Why have we been deprived of direct access to the Imam during this age of occultation or hidden secretive existence of Imam Mahdi salam. Why has it been so prolonged? You may think of a number of reasons, but perhaps the best and perhaps the foolproof approach, the guaranteed approach would be to seek the answer from the fountains of infallible knowledge, Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. As we browse the books of hadith, we come across a great body of a hadith that describe some of the reasons behind this phenomenon the occultation or hidden existence or secretive existence of our Imam alayhi salam, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Why is he, why has he be concealed from our sight? Well, in one hadith, for example, uh, Mawlana Jawad al alayhi salam says that when God actually sees that people are ungrateful towards his greatest blessing and endowment which are us ahlul bayt alayhimussalam divinely appointed imams then he will decide to deprive people of the presence of the imam this is perhaps uh, the first and foremost reason why we are now living in an age of occultation because well if we trace history uh, all the way back to the Holy Prophet when he was poisoned and martyred his rightful successor was not followed by so many or enough people there were only very few people who truly supported Amir al-Mu'mineen In the Ahadith read, there were like maybe 11, 12, well not more than 20 people who were real companions and supporters and defenders of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and in uh, the real sense a Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So that's one reason. But there are also secondary reasons mentioned in a hadith and I'm going to recite one of the uh, I of course presumably one of the most important ones in a hadith narrated by uh, Ibn Umair which was a companion of Imam Sadiq salam, he narrates from Imam Sadiq salam, and his narrative begins with his words as he presents a question to Imam Sadiq salam, in which he asked the Imam uh, why did Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam Asadullah al-Qalib the invincible man of battle 
why did Amir al-Mu'mineen refrain from battling, or in other words, uh, confronting with sword, and thereby, of course, killing uh, his enemies? And in the hadith, actually, the name of Umar and Abu Bakr has been mentioned. Uh, why did he not confront them with his sword? Why did he not battle them with sword and thereby, of course, eliminate them and erase them and just uh, uh, take back his right, claim his rightful position? Well, uh, the Imam, of course, uh, answers his question with a verse from Quran. So his question was, why did Amir al-Mu'minin refrain from battling and confronting with sword and killing, in fact, uh, that uh, those two, the first and second, uh, actually figures who usurped the rightful position of Amir al-Mu'minin and alienated him. And of course, people followed them in the same manner uh, and why did he, of course, did not put an end to the matter from the very early stage? Uh, so Imam Sadiq salam describes actually what happened uh, following the martyrdom of Rasulullah. We know that he was poisoned by his family members, his wife. Uh, I do not need to mention who, he, who she was. You certainly know uh, who I'm talking about. But Imam says that Amir al-Mu'minin did so, meaning refrained from doing so, in respect with uh, or in submission to a verse from Quran. And the companion of Imam Sadiq asked, which verse from Quran? And Imam Sadiq salam recited this verse from Quran from Surah Al-Fatih, verse number 25. Uh, the part of the, uh, actually, verse goes, وَلَوْ لَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ أَنْ تَتَأُوهُمْ فَتُصِيبَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَعَرَّةٌ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ لِيُدْخِلَ اللَّهِ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءٌ لو تزيلوا لعذبنا الذين كفروا منهم عذابا أليما. Well, let me give you just a brief and concise translation of this hadith, but you can refer to the hadith and uh, actually uh, read uh, the ahadith that have been uh, actually presented in the books of uh, exegesis, huh? The books of tafsir exegesis uh, like the, the Al-Burhan uh, in respect to this uh, actually verse of Quran. Uh, so basically God says that had it not been for Rajalun uh, Mu'minun, the faithful men and women uh, that you do not know, that you are not aware of and you may hurt them unknowingly and thereby commit a sin involuntarily and unknowingly uh, then the the latter part of the verse is actually the part that the narrator of the hadith asks what does this part mean what does it mean Lao Tazayalu means had they been segregated or separated. Had they been segregated means the faithful and the unfaithful, the infidels, the non-believers, the profane. Then God would certainly have uh, sent down his punishment and eliminated all those uh, people who wronged Amir al-Mu'min But because of this hadith, uh, because those faithful and non-faithful had not been segregated, Amir al-Mu'min did not kill uh, those people who confronted him and usurped his right. Now, the Imam explains that this part, this segregation means that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had actually deposited the seeds of the faithful in the lineage of certain infidels or kuffar who were later on going to be born and come to life and emerge in this world. So if Amir al-Mu'min had killed those uh, kuffar from the very beginning, these uh, mu'mineen or the faithful, which were divine deposits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the lineage or the progeny of these actually infidels, then uh, these mu'mineen and the faithful would also, uh, as a consequence, been eliminated. So Amir al-Mu'min salam refrained from doing so because of this very verse of Quran that the faithful and the non-faithful at that point were, had not been segregated yet. And there were faithful uh, people deposited as divine deposits in, uh, as seeds in the lineage of the uh, infidels. Now, the Imam continues and say the same thing applies to Qa'imana, Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. And he will not emerge until the time that all these divine deposits, those faithful people, emerge and are born and come to life. So that's a uh, very insightful hadith that explains this uh, lengthy span of the age of occultation. That Imam Mahdi salam will wait until all these divine deposits emerge and of course come to life so that they will assist him in his great cause. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, beautiful and precious hadith. And I do recommend that you refer to this verse, Surah Al-Fat, verse number 25, and the books of exegesis like uh, Tafsir al-Burhan and other uh, books of uh, Tafsir that have, of course, narrated the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam in uh, explanation and elucidation of this uh, verse. Thank you very much for staying tuned and have a most wonderful night.